All right, so we're going to continue our discussion on vector spaces. And again, this is mostly just review. So we have a direct uh, sum of vector spaces. Anyways, uh, by the way, I, I think I'm going to start doing this where I actually write up all the stuff on the board beforehand and then present it. I think it allows me to talk about the stuff um, a little more quickly and it flows a little better. I don't know. I'm going to try it out and we'll see how it goes. So if you have two vector spaces, V1 and V2, then we can take their direct sum. And so how we get this is we start with the um, the setwise direct product V1 cross V2. So we just have ordered pairs where the first coordinate is in V1 and the second coordinate is in V2. And we adapt, end out with an abelian group action plus where if you add two vectors, you just add each of these, um, each of the coordinates. And of course, the reason this is abelian is because V1 and V2 are vector spaces, and this plus comes from V1, this plus comes from V2. Those are both abelian, therefore this plus is abelian. We've also got scalar multiplication. If you multiply a, um, an ordered pair by some constant, it goes on the inside of both coordinates. Okay, so that is the group itself, and we can also do this on sort of the um, the homomorphism level, or the linear map level, whatever you want to call it. Um, for i equals 1 and 2, you could have a linear map from a vector space v1 into a vector space w1, or v2 to w2, and then you get a linear map, and you can just call the direct sum of f1 and f2 and it goes from this direct sum into this direct sum and it's given by this map you just take each coordinate and you map that particular coordinate to wherever f i maps that ith coordinate so like this so as matrices if F1, if F1 has matrix X1 and F2 has matrix X2, then the matrix for the direct sum looks like this. So if you multiply by a vector over here, the, the rows over here are going to be multiplied by X1 and the rows down here are going to be multiplied by X2. So it's really when you're looking at a, um, when you're looking at a vector, um, these first coordinates are the only ones that are really affected by the first vector space, and the lower ones are affected by the second one. And this also shows you, and another thing you can improve is that um, dimensions are additive here. So the dimension of V1 plus the dimension of V2 is equal to the dimension of the direct sum of V1 and V2. So in some sense, you're taking two different vector spaces and you're just sort of sticking them together and not really imposing any conditions on them to interact at all. They're just, they both happen to be there. You just kind of glued them together or something without imposing any additional structure, I don't think. Um, okay, so that's that. Also, we have a definition of a bilinear map. Um, basically, a map is bilinear if it's linear and linear so it's bilinear um, so if you f if we have a map f that goes from v1 cross v2 into w then if you fix the um if you fix v1 and capital v1 then you can consider the map sending v1 into whatever f evaluated at v1 v2 is where v1 is fixed and so here, this is this is in V capital V two, and this is in W, and so this is um, a map from V two to W, and it's uh, for it to be bilinear, this has to be a homomorphism, i.e., this needs to be a linear map. And so basically, if you plug in a linear combination here, you need to get a linear combination over here. And the same thing for um, if you fix a v2 and you have a similar thing for v1 and then we have tensor products so 
Tensor products are sort of weird. Um, this is, we sort of have a, I, I have a couple definitions here. This is sort of, I think the most general definition. And I went to go look this up. And the thing about this definition is it seems like it's presented at such a general level that it's typically accompanied by a lot fancier vocabulary that I'm not really familiar with yet. So the um, basically, like I asked my professor, like where's a good place to see um, the definition of tensor product discussed at this level of generality? And he was like, oh, just look at Lang. And so I looked at Lang and if you want to read, if you want to be able to understand what's going on here, you need to understand category theory and something about universal somethings or I don't know. Um, it's stuff that I don't understand. Um, so anyways, I'm going to give this definition. There's some sort of, there's some statements in here that I'm not currently able to prove, but we're just going to have to take them as fact for now. So what this is, is it's the unique vector space. You would have to prove uniqueness. I don't know how to present a proof of that. Um, such that there is a bilinear map and it goes from this direct um, product into whatever this thing is. So if you fix V1, this is going to be, so this map fixing V1 is going to be linear in the V2 variable and fixing V2, it's going to be linear in the V1 variable. And it's such that if you take any vector space W and any bilinear map F that goes from V1 cross V2 into W, then you can, uh, you get a unique um, map F tilde from this tensor product to W, which is linear and makes this following diagram commute. So if you have any map that goes from here to here, then there always exists a unique F tilde such that going through this map here, and this map here was the one, the bilinear map that we started with. Going through here and then here will be the same as going down here. And I think this is like a universal property or something like that. I don't know if I'm using that term right. I, th I think that's sort of what's going on here. And that's something that comes up at once you get a little deeper into algebra. But anyways, um, so we call it the tensor product. So that's one definition. Here's a little more concrete of a definition. What you could do is uh, you start with the span of V1 direct sum with V2. And that's just, um, when I say span, what I mean is you consider it as a, you consider this as a set. And then you consider, okay, well, we can take things and add them together. And we can also take things and multiply them by, um, uh, con by scalars in C. All the all of these scalars are going to be C. All these vector spaces are going to be over C. But um, there's no we we at this point we're just taking all these like sums and scalar products. We don't know how to combine these things yet. Um, like it's not like we can say oh this plus this equals this. You just put the pluses in on the inside there. I'm not telling you how to combine things like this. I'm just telling you, consider all things that like look like sums like this and you sort of have to keep the, um, the vectors in here separate at this point. Um, and then you quotient by the span of this space. And you know, since I'm, since I'm writing all of this stuff down here, I'm not sure if I need to like write span here. That might be a little, um, a little repetitious. So I'm not sure about that, but basically what this does is this ensures bilinearity. Bilinear, whatever. Um, because if, if you look at this, what is this saying? So in this space, um, if we're quotienting by this minus this minus this, then you have two things in, in this quotient space being equivalent if um, this, this thing equals zero. 
And so if you like sort of write it, write it as this minus this minus this equals zero and you bring these two things over to the other side, what it literally tells you is it literally says, oh, um, these two things are equivalent if they are, they satisfy the linear, linearity condition in the first coordinate, i.e. if you have a linear combination in this first coordinate here, then you can break it out and get, um, pull the constants out and then break it out into two separate terms as well. Okay, so, so this quotienting by this part gives you, by lin gives you linearity in the first coordinate. And similarly, similarly, quotienting here gives you linearity in the second um, coordinate. And so those two combined gives you bilinearity. And so that's why we need to have a bilinear map from V1 cross V2 into V1 tensor V2. That's sort of, we're, we're sort of building that into here. So that's a little more hands-on, at least we're you have a little bit more of an idea of um, what these things look like and there's a lot fewer quantifiers floating around. It's not like there exists a map such that for anything such that this, then there exists a unique this, whatever. Um, it's just all kind of laid out here. But the easiest definition, and this is, um, this is the one that I've actually learned before, and it's the easiest one where you can sort of uh, start working with tensor products and actually sort of have an idea of what's going on is you just take you take the set v1 cross v2 and so going from v1 cross v2 into this um, tensor product is going to be bilinear again um, so if you have a so if you have like a linear combination here then you can break it up and you have a, if you have a linear combination here you can break it up um so not only is that bilinear but w has a basis and i i ran out of room here i didn't write out all the details um ei tensor fj so here what we're assuming is ei um we have some collection we have some basis for v1 that we're going to and we're going to let EI be the collection of those basis elements. And we have a basis for VJ. And we're going to let the FJs be a, no, V2 FJ. So we have these FJs, which are basis elements for V2. Then we obtain a basis for the tensor product by considering um, tensor products of the combinations of these basis vectors. So here I rate, so if the dimension of V1 is N and the dimension of V2 is M, then uh, I here ranges from 1 to N and J ranges from 1 to M. And so from here you s immediately see that, okay, this space is going to have dimension N times M. And that turns out to be true. Um, Whereas for direct sums, dimensions were additive. For tensor products, dimension is multiplicative. And so that finishes up everything on these two boards. And then we'll continue from here.